We're going to talk more specifically about each of the various sensation or sensory organs, the first one being vision for our second set of notes in Unit 4. So we're going to talk about all about the eye and vision in general. So here is an image of the eye, and you need to be able to label an eye, a diagram of the eye, as well as tell each function of every single part. So we'll start from the outside. The outside layer of your eye, like when you're putting on your contact or getting something out of your eye, if you were to touch your eyeball, you would be touching your cornea. This is the transparent outer covering of the eye that essentially is just a protective covering. Now granted, if you damage that, it's also incredibly painful. Hence, when you get something in your eye, it hurts, right? The next part is the pupil. It's simply a hole. The pupil is a hole in our eye. It allows light to enter into our eyeball, right? The iris is the colored part of your eye. It's that colored ring around the pupil, and it contracts. It's a muscle that controls the pupil um, and how much light enters into the eye. So when you're in the dark, your iris opens up the pupil for you to allow in more light. And when you're out in the bright sun or bright light, it contracts. The iris actually contracts to close the pupil to allow less light in because less is required and you don't want to damage your retina. So through the pupil controlled by the iris, it goes to the lens. The lens is what focuses light and the image onto the retina. The lens is also what flips the image that you're receiving upside down. Very interesting. So if you see, this is the image seen by this diagram here. The candle right side up, the lens flips it over and projects an upside down image onto what is the retina, the very back of our eye. Okay, so the retina contains visual and sensory receptors. The retina is where transduction occurs in an eye. Each one of our sensory organs transduces, you should write this down in your notes, Transduction is when the sensory organs translates the stimulus, for instance, light waves in an eye, translates the external environmental stimulus into a neural message so that our brain can understand, right? You don't like crack your skull open, open it up and put in an image and close it back up and that's how things get in your brain. No, it's transduction. It takes the light or the sound wave, whatever it is, and transduces or translates it into a neural message. In the retina, we have a fovea, which is this little bump right in the very middle center of where images are projected onto our retina. Um, it is the point of central focus. So if you are focusing on my face or on this slide, on your computer screen or phone screen right now, it is, on, it is in your fovea of your retina because you're focused on it. So the fovea contains most of the eye's cones, and we're going to talk about what cones are. They allow you to depict or pick up on fine detail, okay? They allow you to perceive fine detail, hence why they're in the fovea. The fovea is the central, the point of central focus, hence it allows you to focus on items and see detail. Then we have the optic nerve, and the optic nerve is, um, the kind of makeup of a bunch of different axons of different cells that carries the message to the brain, to the thalamus, and then to the visual cortex. At the point in which our optic nerve leaves our eye, you notice there's kind of a gap here. That's why each of our eyes has a blind spot. A blind spot exists because it's where the optic nerve leaves the eye. There's no receptors there in our retina, and we're going to test our blind spot. We have wavelengths um, for both light waves and sound waves. We're going to talk about the light waves here with hue. Okay, Hue allows you to see color. So it's the dimension of color determined by wavelength of light. So the wavelength is the highest peak to the next highest peak, the distance from the peak of one wave to the peak of the next. So short waves, right, more compact wavelengths or a high frequency if you have many waves, those are more bluish colors, but they're also high-pitched sounds. The higher the frequency, right, or the shorter the wavelength, the more bluish the color or high-pitched the sound. The longer the wavelength, which is a low frequency, the more red the color um, and the more low-pitched the sound. So different wavelengths of light result in different colors, right, all the way from the bluish-purplish to the brighter, more intense colors of reds. 
Brightness um, is in intensity, right? Intensity is the brightness of a color. So it's the amount of energy in a wave determined by the amplitude, which is how high the waves are, um, which is related to perceived brightness. So great amplitude of a light, the more intense it is, the brighter the color, but also the louder the sound. So not the pitch of the sound, but the volume. The smaller amplitude, the shorter waves, are more dull colors and softer sounds. So blue color um, with varying levels of intensity. As intensity increases or decreases, blue color looks more washed out or darkened. So what about when our eyes don't see 2020 vision, 20 vi 2020 vision being perfect vision? We are either nearsighted or farsighted, and many of you are probably nearsighted or farsighted. Nearsighted folks are able to see near items, right? They are nearsighted. They can see things near to them. So it's a condition in which near objects are seen more clearly than distant objects. And this is because the eye is elongated, right? It's not a perfectly round circle. It's more elongated like this and the image focuses before it hits the retina. Notice that the retina is back here, but the image is focusing up this way. That's nearsighted vision, okay, because it's, it's focusing before the retina, so the image that does get to the retina is blurred for images that are far away. A far-sighted eye, it's not perfectly round, it's more compact like this. A condition in which far away objects are seen, but nearer objects are not. This is because the eye is shortened and the image would focus after it hit the retina, hence way out here. So the image that does hit the retina is rather distorted. Let's look in and zoom in more closely on the retina here. So if this is the eye, light going through the lens onto the retina, this little box here is where we're gonna zoom in and is this zoomed in image right here. The light sensitive inner surface of the eye, which contains receptor rods and cones, plus layers of other neurons, including bipolar and ganglion cells, and it processes the visual information. Here's the thing you have to know, a few things really. The image that you are perceiving does not hit the retina up here and then go back. Nope, it hits the back of the retina and works its way forward. So it hits the back of the retina where the cones and the rods are, and then it goes to the bipolar cells, and then it goes to the ganglion cells. Really quickly, cones allow us to see color. Color cones, cones color, as well as fine detail. You need to make sure that you have that written down. Rods, which we have more of them, rods allow us, they're more light sensitive, so they allow us to see better when there's less light. Hence, they are light sensitive, so they pick up light better. So the cones and the rods send the information to the bipolar cells, there's fewer of those. Bipolar cells then send them to the ganglion, and the ganglion axons, the axons of the ganglion cells, because they're neurons, right, create the optic nerve. The fovea, which we talked about, is that little like dent or hump in the retina in the back, is the central point of the retina, uh, where there are a lot of cones. So if we zoom in on the, the fovea here, you'll see that everything in the fovea are cones. Because of this, there is little color vision in the farthest periphery of our vision. Let's, let's talk about like your peripheral vision, right? Like if you're focused on the screen, everything outside of the screen is in your periphery and it's kind of blurry right now, right? And even out here in the very periphery of your vision, you're not going to be able to detect color really at all and definitely not as easy as that that's in your fovea, in your focus, right? This is because of where rods and cones are. Rods are predominantly in charge of our peripheral vision because they are on the periphery of our retina. There are no cones on the farthest periphery of our eye. So think about as to why your pupil dilates. Yes, it allows in more light, but it also exposes more rods. It makes sense because our rods are light sensitive, allowing us to see better when it's dark and why our pupils then dilate. So let's talk about our rods and cones. Um, got a lot less cones than we do rods and they're in our fovea, which we've talked about, whereas the rods are in our periphery. Cones allow us to see color, rods do not. Whereas rods are more light sensitive, allowing us to see in the dark. Um, and cones allow us to see detail, 
okay? Now, here's the thing as to why they allow us to see detail, and I'm actually going to go back to the last picture, uh, this one. So you have a yellow cone here. The reason why cones allow us to see better detail is because they are the only ones using a bipolar cell. A cone and bipolar cell are one-to-one. -one. So the image or message coming from the cone goes very clearly to a bipolar cell. Whereas with rods, there's approximately four rods to every bipolar cell. So if you have one bipolar cell and four rods all going into the same bipolar cell, that message is going to be uh, distorted or not as clear as when you have one rod to one bipolar cell. Okay, so that's why cones allow us to see fine detail. So again, about these, think of the order rods and cones, and then it's kind of an alphabetical order, bipolar and then ganglion. They receive messages, transmit it to the ganglion, and then the axons of the ganglion form the optic nerve. Okay, remember that cones each have their own bipolar cell, and then multiple rods share a bipolar cell. So we can actually test your blind spot, and you can do it right now. Just back up a little bit from the screen. Make sure that you um, are full screen right now with the video. What I want you to do is cover up, let's say, your left eye. No, you would have to cover up your right eye. Cover up your right eye looking at the screen. Using your left eye, I want you to focus on the monster, the cookie monster on the right of your screen, okay? And I want you to get a little closer and closer and closer and closer to the monster until you notice that the cookie disappears. If you were to move a little bit, it'll reappear, but as you get closer into a certain area, the cookie will disappear. When it disappears, you have found your blind spot. Very, very intriguing stuff, right? Now here's the thing, your brain will fill it in with white. If we were to do this on pink paper or colored paper, your brain would fill it in with a color, that color. It's because our brains don't like incomplete stuff, so it completes it for us.